Hello and welcome to Skypod. I am Ocean and I have with me Alma. And I'm going to let her introduce herself because her energy is so contagious. So I'm just going to pass it on to her. Hi guys. I want to try how this sounds like. This is like a dream coming true. My name is Asma Muhammad Sabin. I'm from Afghanistan, born and brought up in UAE and a fresh, fresh Taza Taza alumni of Skyline University College. I'm 25 years old. I work as a sales manager and I think that's enough for me to say about myself in the beginning and throughout the whole podcast, you're going to learn more about me. Thank you, Asma. So today we'll be touching on this very touchy topic called, I, I wouldn't call it touchy, but it's important yeah. in this time and age. Yeah. It is financial independence for women. Yes. Particularly women. I believe financial independence is important for everybody. Right. But for women, I think it is uh, less open up. Right. Uh, what was your journey, Asma? Like from being a student, how was your financial journey? Like getting into uh, a new workspace uh, after your graduation? Okay. Thank you, Ocean. Now, the first thing that I want to say, I think. I'm looking forward for um, a life and a time where financial independence for women is such a normal topic. And it's not even a topic. The reason that this is a topic because somewhere we are missing on it. Like, let's say no one talks about financial independence for men. I mean, it is just like, excuse me, you don't even need to say that. But why are we bringing and talking that it's a touchy topic and an important because there is still a big lack. I am looking forward for that time. At least when my kids grow up, my daughter is grown up, this topic is not a topic it is just like a normal statement having all of it said just for your information i did not started working or i have understood money after i graduated i did not had to wait for that and i believe i have a lot to say on this topic and i'm so glad that today the chances so basically i come from a very orthodox family like if i see the background and the people that i always live with there was a lot of um blockage for women to you know be the outspoken person or be the spotlight in gatherings but then my father he always was very different than other people he always believed that my daughters have to be the best my daughters have to be the most spoken person my, my daughters have to be the best educated they, they need to be the best in all kind of things that actually men are so um back in so i'm 25 so back in 2011 so that's 2011 no sorry 2010 october 10 so i remember the date because it's 10 10 10 um i used to live in an area where we had a lot of families and there was one family who couldn't afford school and they had two kids because they were so financially like not so good and they were like you know my kids don't go to school and i was like i can teach them abc and then the lady was like, yeah, but I can't afford. I'm like, it's OK. I mean, I myself was so small and we started teaching those two kids for 25 dirhams per month. And then these two kids used to come to my place for an hour and I used to get 25 dirhams. And let me tell you, I used to get 100 dirhams pocket money by that time and that to maybe in two weeks or a month. But that 25 dirhams was like a million dollars to me. I would sit and plan being so young that what am I going to buy for my family with that own money? The happiness of the 25 dirhams was touching the sky. Slowly, slowly, these uh, kids kept saying to their neighbors and I ended up having 25 children coming to my home and I distributed them in two batch and I used to earn 5,000 dirhams right sitting in my home. I was in my area known as the Afghani tutor and I had students coming from Ajman. I had students coming from Dubai all over to Sharjah and that feeling was very different. And let me tell you, it was not only me, it was me and my sister together. So suddenly the whole thing went higher. From that day, October 10, 2010, there's no stoppage. I have been financially independent at school, at university, up till date. And now it's so difficult to go back to my father to ask him for anything. Okay. I think that's how it started. If I may ask, what did you do with that first 25 that you got? <laughs> I'm not sure if you remember it, but... I do. I do. Because I, I remember I made a list of what am I going to buy for my dad, mom, though it was very less, but I still remember I managed to get one of the... I, I went and got some hair clips for my mom. Like that 25 dirhams was a lot for me. I even planned that I'm going to buy a bed sheet for my mom. I don't know why was I planning that, maybe because those days she, she was looking for something like that. But... 
just to add on to this trust me i'm this is like to all the girls out there the moment you have your own money in your hand you speak different you talk differently you are much more um i i i i, I must say that your advices are much more valued the same goes for men i mean if you are in a family and then there's a man having money who owns and who brings something to the table his advices are taken and the same goes for the woman like now being an independent person whenever there is a decision that has taken that has that that takes up in my home i am on the table sitting and my advices are counted why because i'm financially independent and they trust me that i'm smart enough to decide that's great so <coughs> what do you think are some of the setbacks so you know most women are told no in terms of going ahead mm. in life personally or just you know the the can do attitude for that yeah. matter Uh, do you think that suppresses women from actually pursuing what they are capable of or tapping into their own potential? Right. I think um, in my life, I think <clears throat> there was a lot of family pressure. Ex- like my not my first family, the extended family. There were some X Y Z people coming to my dad and saying that oh, they just finished school, get them married. What is the requirement? Uh, I mean, what else is is to be done? And my father was like. Mm-mm. I don't want anyone else to come and decide on what my daughters have to do. So, just for your information, we my 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 mom was the first woman as in to take driving license in our family and it was a big shock to people because my father believed that I need my woman not to go travel in different taxis or buses. They she needs to have her own car and take her own kids and from there it started and then my sister and then me. So, family was the first drawback. Second, I believe at one point of time we women are made by god like that that we do get tired like if we talk about a man you know a man is raised in that way that you are the bread earner you have to do it they have that thing you know installed in them while they're born but we are not so sometimes your own self makes you feel like you cannot do it but then you always need someone at the back pushing you and for me it was my father and my mom they both were like this one day she'll be fine let her cry it's okay she's not going to give up so i think it's family uh, your own self and sometimes the lack of opportunities that are available at the moment not in this country i'm talking about because uae is a country that that has abundant opportunities for women i mean the way we are respected and given the chance we, i don't think any other part of the world has so far reached this level but then still lack of opportunities i would say from 2010 up until now you started early in 2010 right now. what is the best investment that you made I think um, completing my university. So I have so many things to say. So when I finished my school, um I finished my school in 2017 on April 16th. It was my last board exam and on April 18th I got my job. It was 2 days after that and I was quite lucky to get it. My father wanted wanted me to do medical because for obvious reasons I was good in studies and he wanted me to pursue medical. he went through a big loss and you know almost like bankrupt and then he was like give me an year's time i don't want you to go in the other field or stick for medical that one year i kept on working and i had a good job i was a marketing assistant life was happening and one year later i went back to my father and i still saw that his situation was not better at that time one of my friend uh, said that she suggested me to come to skyline and i was quite reluctant i'm like mm, i don't want to do that i want to go in medical and then psychology was introduced in our university and i came in and the day The next day I'm supposed to come with checks and with the cash to register. There was a lot of drama that happened that hey you cannot afford Skyline, you just started your job and you know there's a lot of pressure on me. I think I called my friend and I was like I don't think so. I'm going to tear the checks. I don't want to go. I think I cannot pay the fees. It's too much and with my this job and my friend is like you better sleep. Keep the file under your pillow. Just sleep. And the next day 6 o'clock or 7 she sneaked into my room and she was like don't even brush your teeth don't talk to anyone in your family you're going to be demotivated or someone is going to say you something let's leave she took me out we came to the university i got registered and life just happened the the fees was just coming the money was just coming my biggest investment is my university wow. and i'm so proud of myself so if you were to say uh, three takeaways from skyline over the four years that you spent over here So what are those three takeaways and how has it helped you in terms of being financial literacy or being very well right? I think number 1 would be say yes to every and any opportunity. 
and even if it is not an opportunity make it as an opportunity and go for it never say no to something because you never know where you end up and what you learn from it that's number 1 number 2 uh there is no time there's no right time for anything it's 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 just the same time like there are people who say i think um this is not the right time no 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 trust me the moment you opt for something and you decide you want to do it just start off with whatever limitations you have just start off things will fall back into place automatically there's no right time for it and one more enjoy your life because the time that you're passing will never come back and every past time looks better for me now i feel like oh my god those days are better now maybe after 2 years i'm going to think this days are better so we are greedy people towards good times just enjoy make the most of the out of the moment okay some women right they forget to invest in themselves uh what are your thoughts on that sad very sad my condolences with you guys trust me every time you are paid for your hard work the first thing before you pay those n number of bills go and do something for yourself you girls you beautiful women out there listening to me you need to do something with that money either go to a parlor make your nails go for a good blow dry go buy yourself a new dress that's lying in your cart maybe for how many months we girls are tend to do things for our families rather than us god have blessed us with such a beautiful heart but you need to bless yourself also with something the first time you get a paycheck go have a beautiful dinner go watch a nice movie and you know what try to do it alone you are going to love it you are going to love it spend some time alone with your own money have coffee make nails see i did it my nails though i'm broke but i did it guys you are going to like it investing in yourself is the best thing you would do in a long life you are going to be thankful for your own self that you made investment that could be in any way but first thing make your own self happy if you are happy you will radiate happiness okay so uh, what is one mistake related to money that you make and also a very difficult or tricky question not difficult people. i know the answer i mean people who know me i'm a very bad person i cannot save i mean i i think i took this very seriously uh is is one day jilo i i think i have taken this so personally i have money i'm like it's better i i i eat a good meal i am not a good person with saving i cannot save i mean i cannot so i'm still learning i'm 25 i'm still learning how to save it's okay i'll get there but then you know uh, i have friends who say i saved so and so amount and then girl math i make myself happy i'm like the money that i have spent on my university degree is my savings and that makes me so happy i'm like ah oh, asma don't worry you saved a lot the degree is my saving <clears throat> okay so certain people coin this term right called financial maturity hmm. what is your understanding about financial maturity is it just wisely allocating money to different things or something else i think uh, i might be very wrong what google defines this but for me what i understand is the financial maturity is when you start understanding how to make money with whatever you have or whatever you know and every person listening out there this you guys need to just take a minute and think what is that one thing that you are best at maybe that could be talking that could be counseling that could be painting that could be baking that could be stitching anything trust me think of that one thing make that as your passion and make money out of it i believe that's when i will call you that you are financially matured Okay. Uh, there's a stereotype that women spend more than men. There's always that picture is being painted that women are high maintenance and uh, they spend a lot. And yeah, because we can earn that much. I mean, yes, we are high maintenance because uh, duh, we work that hard to keep ourselves highly maintained. So if there's any man out there who wants to marry or look forward for a woman. you need to make sure that you have to maintain her either better than what she is been maintaining herself or at least to her level i mean you saw her highly maintained and that's why maybe you liked her so now why would you want her to go lower than that like no 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 that does not work girls open your hearts and open your eyes before your hearts and see where and how this guy is going to maintain you don't suffer for less advice okay so you saw her from 2010 about now it's been 15 years 
Has there been a point? I'm sure you're self-sufficient. But is that self-sufficiency sometimes portrayed as a bad thing? Yes. <laughs> so sometimes um, in my family when I say something that might be so right, that might be like white or black. But then there are some people who just get offended and they'll be like, oh, you're boosting your money. And I'm like, why do you take it that way? And then and then one more thing, I think this is very funny. So the way I, I maintain myself, when someone says me about money and I say I don't have money, people don't believe. They don't believe I don't have money. And I have to like be like, guys, literally, I don't have money. Like there are some times of month because I'm not so good in saving. I do have that days of month where I don't have money and there are people who don't believe me. I don't know why. I don't know why there are people who cannot believe the fact that I don't have money. Guys, I sometimes don't have money like today, but I still made my nails. You see <laughs> priorities. <laughs> okay. Uh, my last question would be this. And it's also, I, I don't know if it's an opinion, but women tend to be emotional spenders in the sense that they get emotionally swayed into spending for someone or something or put in a circumstance where they feel like they're responsible to spend for that particular thing. Yes, I think um, this is one of the learnings that I'm having up till date is that not everything and everyone needs your help and not everywhere your help is the last option. But having said that, that does not also mean that you should say no. There might be sometimes people or someone looking for your help and make God might have made you the the you know the messenger or the help that he's sending so you need to be very cautious in who you are helping but then without any expectations of course but sometimes you also need to say no and trust me this feeling and this talent of saying no will make you feel bad at that point when you say no because you might feel that guilt that oh my god why did I say no or what not but trust me on the longer term you will be happy because from my personal experience I'm a kind I was I think a kind of person where anyone would ask me anything even with two dirhams in my account I would give them 2000 by taking it from my family but I would give them and uh, that never helped me and I was I, I think I was in trouble so I believe that yes we are emotional spenders but then it is just that um, we think with our heart first rather than our mind when it's to close people but I think now women it's your time to start thinking with your mind and don't spend that money either spend it on yourself you'll be happy trust me you will be yeah you're right I think you should only buy it as much as you can chew yeah. and not more than that I agree last my last question for sure please ask me more I'm, I'm, I am I am completely in it and I'm so excited I have but so much things to say one question if you were to go on a date do Don't go? ask me this question. My father will look at this. I spoke for Allah. <laughs> no dating husband. I will directly no, marry. Okay, if your parents set it up for you, okay? My father will set up. <laughs> Astaghfirullah. She don't know Afghans. <laughs> Afghan is, no, no. My father. My father is a man of rules. But that does not also but mean. Hypothetically, if okay. you were to go on a date. Okay, Dad. See, it's imagination. Okay. Um, yes. <laughs> Ochako, it's imagination. You can ask me now. Yes. I got permission. Hypothetically, yeah. if you were to go on a date, uh -huh. would you go Dutch or would you let the man spend? Dutch in the sense that would you go half and half? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I need to answer this. A man should spend. A man should pay. A man should do everything. You agree? <laughs> Sir, you agree? <laughs> yes, he agrees. <laughs> I mean, this is the law of nature and I'm going to speak a lot of this, okay? This is the law of nature and I think I think the, the reason that there's a lot of problem and issues with men and women is because men have forgotten what they are supposed to do and and that's so, so, so they step down from their place and women are stepping in and that's becoming an issue. If a man does what a man have to do, the woman will feel her feminine energy. We women, how even if the CEO of a company, if she's a lady, she would still need a husband who will say, hey, I'll take care of it, step back. We are tend to be like that. Even if I have like a million dollars dollars in my account, I would still prefer my husband to take care of everything. The moment my man does everything, there is a different kind of love and respect I have. 
Now I personally would not want to marry a man who asks me what I bring into the table. I bring into the table a good wife, a loyal woman, uh, good children, a beautiful home, a beautiful meal cooked, but that does not also mean that I will step on my dreams. I am going to work, my money remains my money, and your money also remains my money. So if you believe in that, then you better come to my home for a proposal otherwise it's a big no no i mean it's an open call <laughs> yeah it's an open call i mean my i i don't remember my mom being in her marriage life for 32 years she paid for any single thing i mean no even if she's having change which is my father's but my still my father will not allow her to pay because that's like stepping over my father's reputation but nowadays men please let me say this I I mean there are men there are actually not men I don't call them men I call them boys because they're not even enough matured the fa- financial maturity is missing there they still look forward when there is a bill coming in they still wait for the lady to open her wallet why isn't this a shame open your wallet be like a man pay and if you feel like you cannot afford that place go to some chai karak and pay there but pay even if it is to them even if it is I'm a kind of person I when i know someone else is paying i put my limits down but when i know it's me paying i'm going to spread a big table of uh, you know la carte and all menu will be there but men please don't lose your title you are the mister in the relationship and we are the miss in the relationship i don't want to become the mister so you better be the man in the relationship thank you <laughs> good advice but also having said that doesn't your self sufficiency sort of prevent you from you know letting another provide for you or pay for you <laughs> oh shit you are like literally <laughs> you're literally like you have a needle and you're like poking my heart Tell, <laughs> you are talking on top this is a question i just want to make oh yes answer. it does it does so um so when you have a lot of money and you have been used to be the one who pays and one who plans and one who so when someone else does it's be like shit like but then Girls, you need to understand it's okay for a man to pay. It's nothing. It's the bare minimum a man can do to pay for you, to provide you because that's their role and that's their job. You in return have to give them a happy home, a happy life, a good vibe, a uh, loyalty, care. That's your job as a wife in the relationship. So whenever someone spends on you, it's okay. Take it. Take it all heartedly because you deserve it, but also look at yourself. if you are giving enough to that person so that he can happily go out and earn that good amount of money for you don't feel that guilt don't go on that guilt trip i went on that guilt trip and i reached double jess one day and i regret and i wasted a lot of more petrol with that guilt because someone else paid for my dinner but it's okay god will give you chance to pay for people who cannot afford let the man be the mister in the relationship Okay, not on a relationship context or any other context. Just from the financial mm. point of view, what is one advice that you would give to another twenty-five-year-old? That idea that is staying in your mind, or that vision that you have that oh, I want to do this. I know how to do it, or I'm good at it. Don't make it. I will do it. Do it now. If you don't have the enough finance for it there is no harm in asking for help call any person in this world that you might think might help you to start up maybe 2000 5000 whatever amount you would need it take it start it up work it pay that amount off back but be financially stable the moment you're financially stable and you have your own money in your pocket not your father's brother's husband's or fiance's you will look different you will sound different you for yourself will be able to decide differently and trust me guys trust me you will be able to love your own self differently you will see life differently and other thing when a woman works and when a woman uh, earns when her husband also is earning a woman can relate much more better to her husband if she is working than a woman who is not working because you both come from the same kind of life you know how corporate works how the earning works how the finance works so even this is for the men When you are looking for a partner in life, look for someone who understands financial maturity and also I as a person who believes that men have to pay. But if I see my partner going down in life, I am going to step I'll be the first person to step up and help my husband rather than him going to other people for help because my father believes that. I'll just give you an example. So for my sister there was someone who came for proposal and someone said to my dad that oh why are you giving your daughter to this people they are not that 
financially settled. So my father's answer was that I have made my daughters reach to a certain level of life that my daughter and her husband together can build an empire. My daughter is not going there for the money, home or anything. She's going for love, loyalty and care. The rest, money, materialistic, they both can do it together. And my daughter alone have the capability to build her own empire if she wants to. So if she gets love, care, loyalty, she's good to go. And I believe in the same. That's my takeaway. Keep that business up, girl. And tag me, talk with Asma. I'm going to make sure I follow you and I purchase. <laughs> Thank you, Asma, for this wonderful conversation. I thoroughly enjoyed it and I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. This is Asma for you. She is also our alumni council. I want to say something about university, okay? While okay, we wrap up. <laughs> so, trust me guys, like I'm not saying this because I have been a part of this university, but on a genuine note, even if you meet outside, on a, like off camera, and there's no one from the university, I'm still going to say this. If you're looking for a good university where you want flexible hours, where you want the fees not to hit your pocket in a way where it might be, you know, with other options and you want a good reputed university where the degree is well, you know, when you, when you say to someone, I graduated from Skyline University, that Skyline, that when you say it, you feel that, you know, that other person understands the value from the university you're coming from, you need to join this university. Don't waste your time. Even if now you have registered somewhere else, it's okay. Cancelling registration will not have an impact. Come here, meet the admissions team, meet the faculty. You will love us. Come to the classrooms one day, sit in the classroom. You will see how fun things are. And guys, trust me, the best part about this university, they know that you have a life out of it. So if someday you have some issues, discuss with the faculty. We understand. Discuss with your client. Don't go anywhere. Come to SUC, okay? And if you want more information, you can reach out to me. I'll give you all the information of why Skyline University is the best. By the way, next podcast, why you have to enroll in Skyline. Yes. No, Jenny. <laughs> so you heard it from the horse's mouth herself. <laughs> So, uh, in case you have any doubt, please write to us and if you have any questions for us, do tag us or DM us or comment on this video. Yes, and also please let me know, guys, and this is my first podcast, if you guys enjoyed and if you did, what next topic would you want me to talk? And I'm really, really looking forward for someone to just to say, criticize me in a way because the moment I get criticized for the first time, it means I'm on the road of getting uh, famous. <laughs> So yes, open to criticism. Please send all the criticisms to her. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you so much. Thank Asma. you, guys. This was fun. It was fun. Stay tuned for more on Skyfall. Thank you so much for having me on Skyfall. And if you want to see more of it, please do follow Skyline University College on Instagram and have fun. And guys, be financially matured. <laughs>